All right, so now I'm going to show you how Keynesian economic theory uh, explains how to close a recessionary gap in the economy. So uh, let's say the economy is in a recessionary gap. And so we've got real GDP here. We've got price level here, right? Let's go ahead and put in our long run aggregate supply curve. Okay, and we'll put in our aggregate demand curve. There we go. And our short run aggregate supply curve, we'll put right here. And as you can see, here's short run equilibrium is right here. And real GDP is here, right? And so you can clearly see here that we are in a recessionary gap because real GDP is less than natural real GDP. Okay, so we are in a recessionary gap, All right? And that's a problem. So if, if we were in classical economic theory, everybody would say, whoa, this is terrible. We're in a recessionary gap. What are we going to do? And classical economists would say, well, don't do anything. Just keep doing whatever you were doing yesterday or whatever you normally do on Thursday, do that, okay? And tomorrow, do whatever you would normally do on Friday and just, you know, Wait, and, wait, for the, wait for the gap to close. Wait for the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the right, and everything will be just fine. That's classical economic theory. But Keynes said that's not going to happen. This gap is not going to close by itself. We need to take action, not by moving the aggregate supply curve. We need to move the aggregate demand curve. So he's proposing that we got to move this aggregate demand curve. we got to get behind it. we got to push it. Let's push it over to the right. We want to move it to the right so that short run equilibrium intersects with the long run aggregate supply curve and we will be in long run equilibrium. We will close the recessionary gap, right? All right, so look, here's the circumstance. So item one here, when we're in a recessionary gap, real GDP is less than natural real GDP. Okay, good. That's our, that's by definition, this is our circumstance, okay? And so, to, uh, so here's what Keynes says we need to do. We need to increase, we're going to need to increase either investment or government spending or net exports, okay? Or net exports, okay? Through government policy through government policy. Now, the one that is the easiest for the government to affect is government spending. We're going to talk about this later, but it's important to understand that sometimes it's hard for the government to, to force investment. Now, they can do that through like tax incentives and things like that, and there are other things they can do, but, uh, but it's, the government can't go to businesses and say, you are required by law to spend more money because the, it's, well, because it's a free country, I guess, and because the businesses are not government agencies. Um, so it's, it is, it, what a lot of people will say in Keynesian economic theory is, really, ideally, what we should be focusing on here is government spending, because government spending is the one we can control. But that doesn't mean that the government is not able to influence investment and uh, net exports through government policy. Okay, so the first thing that happens is we're in a we're in a recessionary gap. Real GDP is less than natural real GDP. Um, so Keynes says increase investment, government spending, or net exports. When that happens, so after you've done that, what will happen is there will be an increase in income in the economy. Okay, so income will then increase in the economy as the money that's spent in government spending or investment or net exports, as, that, as the spending for these things goes up, that money will filter down to the employees and the owners of those businesses and it will become income for them, meaning that income in the economy will then increase. When income increases, that's going to cause consumption to increase because we know that income affects consumption. So when income goes up, consumption will go up. Consumption is a part of total expenditure, so that'll cause total expenditure 
to go up. Total expenditure going up means that aggregate demand is going up, which will cause a, uh, a right shift. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Right shift of the aggregate demand curve, right? Okay. And so up here, I'm going to put a rightward shift. I'm going to do it in blue. The aggregate demand curve here is going to shift to the right. And our new aggregate demand curve, AD prime, is going to intersect right at the long run aggregate supply curve. So when aggregate demand shifts to the right, that's going to, that's going to increase real GDP. Real GDP is going to increase and it's going to close the recessionary gap. So real GDP will increase until real GDP is equal to natural real GDP, okay, closing the recessionary gap. Closing the recessionary gap. And we are now in long run equilibrium. Okay, so let's see an example of this in the table right here. So again, we're starting at 12,400, that's our equilibrium GDP, and let's say that the leaders in the economy decide, well, we're in a recession, we're in a recessionary gap, we need output in the economy to increase to close the gap, so um, let's say that they believe that we are, our recessionary gap is 500 billion. They think that natural real GDP is actually 12,900, not 12,400. So, uh, so the gap, they believe that the size of the gap is 500 billion, right? Okay, so we want to increase by 500 billion. We just learned how to do this. So we're going to divide 500 by the Keynesian multiplier 4. 500 billion divided by 4 is 125. And therefore, that is our initial injection. So then we'll, they'll, uh, the government leader, leaders will try to enact policy to allow them to increase uh, um, either investment or government spending or net exports by 125. And so let's say that they go in and they encourage, I don't know, let's say they increase, they can increase government spending by 25 billion. So we're going to go 2,725. And then they encourage investment to increase by 100 billion. So that's 3,100. And so now this one goes up by 100 all the way down. This one goes up by 25 all the way down for a total effect on total expenditure of 125. So all of these numbers here will go up by 125. And as we get up here, the one we started with, 12,400, is now going to become 12,525, no longer equal to 12,400. So we don't have equilibrium GDP at 12,400 anymore. But if we go down the line here, we can see at 12,775, if we add 125 to this, we'll be at 12,900. And so that's the third line from the bottom. And if we go across there, you can see 12,900. And sure enough, we just, by increasing investment by 100 billion and increasing government spending by 25 billion, overall in the economy through the chain reaction of consumption spending from here down to here, okay, so that is a, um, let's see that all together. That's a four, should have been three, 375, oh, sorry, not there. From here to here, there we go. All right, so here down to here, we have an increase of 375 in consumption. So increase of 375 in consumption spending, plus the initial 125 brings us up to 12,900, and we are, uh, our equilibrium GDP is now equal to what we believe is natural real GDP, and we have closed the recessionary gap, increased output in the economy by affecting investment 
and government spending. Okay. Now let's look at the uh, closing and inflationary gap. All right. So to close an inflationary gap, we're just going to do everything we just saw basically backwards. Okay. Uh, so here we are. We've got a uh, aggregate market graph here. We've got a long run aggregate supply curve. Uh, here's our short run equilibrium. Uh, short run aggregate supply intersects aggregate demand. And uh, we can see that real GDP is to the right of natural real GDP. Okay, so we have uh, real GDP is too high and therefore we are in an inflationary gap. Okay, um, and so in this circumstance, real GDP is greater than natural real GDP. So Keynesian economic theory would then advise uh, government policy to decrease uh, investment or government spending or net exports. Now, if it was in classical economic theory, uh, what would happen is the short run aggregate supply curve would shift to the left, but Keynesian economic theory is recommending that the aggregate demand curve move, and that's going to take intervention by the government. So the government would then decrease investment, government spending, or net exports to sort of uh, slow down the economy too much. It's kind of out of control. The party's getting a little too wild, and the government is going to uh, basically send the cops into the party to uh, wrap up the party and get everything a little slowed down and quieted down. All right, so when, uh, when uh, investment or government spending or net exports is decreased through government policy, and again, it's easier to affect government spending for the government than it is for them to affect um, investment or net exports, though they can have influence on those things. When, uh, the, when these, one of these three things decreases, that means that there's going to be less money going filtering through to income. There's going to be less money going to the owners and employees of the businesses as income, and therefore, in a way, essentially what's happening is income is being taken away, and then there, so there will be a decrease in income in the economy. When income goes down, that's going to lead to a decrease in consumption, and a decrease in consumption is going to lead to a decrease in total expenditures, a decrease in total expenditures will result in a decrease in, the aggr in aggregate demand and a left shift of the aggregate demand curve. And when the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left, okay, the new aggregate demand curve, maybe AD prime, will shift left until it intersects short run aggregate supply at the long run aggregate supply curve and we'll be in long run equilibrium. Real GDP will shift left so because the new intersection short run e equilibrium is over here. So real GDP will decrease, so we'll have a decrease in real GDP until real GDP is equal to natural real GDP, closing the inflationary gap. There we go. And now, uh, and then now the economy would be in long run equilibrium and no more inflationary gap. Okay. Let's see what that looks like over here. Again, we're at 12,400. Let's say that uh, people in the government, they believe that we're in an inflationary gap and that we should probably gear back to 12,100 for GDP, and therefore what we want here is a negative 300 change in real GDP. And so we're going to divide negative 300 by the Keynesian multiplier 4, and that gives us negative 75. And so we're going to subtract 75 from inve investment, government spending, and or net exports. So let's go over here and let's uh, subtract the whole thing from investment. Let's make investment 2,925 all the way down. We'll leave government spending where it is, although that's probably, the government is probably more likely, actually that's not entirely true, we're going to get to that later, that's political. The government doesn't like decreasing spending in many cases. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say that they're going to pull back on investment. 
Okay? So decreasing investment by 95, or 29, or 2, 29, 25 means that total expenditure is going down by 75. Okay? So this number is now going to become 12,025. This one's going to become 12,100. This one's going to be 12,175. And you can now see that on the second line, we have equilibrium at 12,100 and GDP, equilibrium GDP is now settling at 12,100 and so we had a decrease of 300 uh, in GDP and we have closed the inflationary gap, okay? All right, well, that's it. That's all we need to know. I'm sure uh, Keynesian economic theory, there's more to it than just what we've seen, but I believe that this is the basics of Keynesian economic theory. This is enough for you to understand that in addition to classical economic theory, which recommends adjusting uh, through the, or having, you know, the adjustment occurs through the short run aggregate supply curve, Keynesian economic theory recommends affecting aggregate demand, okay? And so now we're going to take these two theories that we've learned and we're going to move on and we're going to learn how in the government actually uh, uh, the policies that the government uses to actually uh, um, mess with the economy or fix the economy or adjust the economy, okay?